Hunter x Hunter episode 57. Oh my god, I can't believe they're starting with that. What an opening shot. This girl's deadly. Uh oh. Melody senses trouble. <laughs> Right, right. Melody knows all the details at least. Damn. How do you communicate it without communicating it? Glua is bringing it to action with the plan. Going, you know, kind of just along for the ride. <laughs> Initiative X and X Law. It's a good thing Lirio can't give off any Nen. <laughs> oh yeah, they're pros. Oh yeah. We're way outclassed here. Watch Lirio come through and save the day. Oh no, he's gonna bumble it, isn't he? <laughs> I'm so on edge all of a sudden. If there's one thing Lyra does it to do, it's <laughs> be loud. <laughs> but he's communicating. Even Gon got it. I so want Lyra to save them. I so want Lyra to make this happen. Yeah, well, I mean, of course. Right, it's easy. Who could do that? Hey, throwback. What are you? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Rubbing it in. But he likes them. He loves them. We don't like him. I feel like they, they had a great cover here. Which is that. What if they had just said, yeah, we, we changed our minds. We came here to join you. They might not be in thread handcuffs right now if they had done that. The balls on these kids. Right, right. If you close your eyes first, you'll be prepared when the lights go out. This is either extremely useless information or like the most useful information I've ever said, <laughs> depending on how you look at it. If you're in a situation where you anticipate turning off a light and still having to navigate, for example, you use the bathroom in the middle of the night and then turn off the light and have to walk back to bed, you keep one eye closed the whole time. <laughs> then when you turn off the light, you open that eye and it'll be adjusted to the darkness already. <laughs> I like your spunk. I only want you to join more. That's what I'm saying. That's what I've been saying. Um, no. <laughs> That's not it. But we're thinking. Damn, they're good. Hope it takes more than two minutes. This is a death sentence. That is way too much time in the Nen world. Yeah. This is gonna be power exposition. What they should have done is the Hisoka thing of revealing a startling truth. You know what might have worked? Risky, but definitely would have been the distraction they wanted. We know who the chain user is. How many seconds we got? It's really difficult to not think about something. If you tell yourself not to think about something, you think about it more. You have to actively think about something else. I wonder if, it th if this was exactly a minute in real time. Oh, she saw the- did you just see the plan? Right as it happened? I guess she saw Kurapika too. And just relocating. <laughs> uh, they're still dangerous in the dark, though, even without seeing. Oh no, th this works in the dark, doesn't it? Do it! Oh, wow. Yeah, they're just, they're just light years ahead. They're light years ahead. This is not going well, and now they're gonna die. Kurpika Melody. Leorio? <laughs> Great plan, though. Leorio didn't bumble that one, to be fair. Okay, everyone sleeps on the Oreo.
No way, no way. Whoa, that raises so many questions. So did Kuripika just yoink him? Leaving Kalua and Gon? I feel like he wouldn't do that. I feel like after that whole conversation, there'd be a plan in place for all of it. What it looks like on the surface is that he just abandoned Gon and Kalua for his plan. That would be really interesting, but in a way also kind of disappointing. I don't think that's what it is though. I think that was mutual. Okay, here it is. Here's the plan. A little bit of blackmail. Wait, what? I missed it too. There was a lot going on. Wait, who was the... I totally missed Kurpika in disguise. Oh, wow. Well, Kurpika's pretty. <laughs> but a guy. Steins Gate moment. That is true. Well, the last part is under question right now, but definitely has that potential. Yeah, it's a L light moment. Wow, they're so so magnanimous, so generous, not thinking about the fact that Kirby can left them. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the note, but I guess that's probably the only thing he could do given the time he had. This is the craziest standoff. This origin flashback. Not many of them still around. They all look so young. God, I remember when I thought they were an cohesive group. This will test her character, but I think it's pretty clear where she stands. She's not gunning for the top. Pride and betrayal. This is so interesting. Such a deep look into their, their philosophy and into her. I wonder if this brings Kurapika and Hisoka into conflict now. I don't know, it's kind of a weird distinction to make. It's not clear at all that trying to save him is betraying the spider. It stems from their unity, their group unity. Melody can sense this is a very tense situation. Thank you, Krolo. I feel validated. If Krolo gets confused, I feel less bad about frequently lapsing into she. That's a credible threat. <laughs> He's not composed. Totally. Fortune's X can X be wrong. That feeling when the person in chains is in control. He used to punch him. Well, everything he says is something he believes. It doesn't mean it's true or right. The best lies are the one that you believe. Born from death. This is more interestingly specific than Melody's usual assessments. You have no other option at this point. You go with what, what you started. This look has got to be the ace, right? It's got to be the wild card here. Otherwise, it just seems like a total stalemate leaning in favor of the Phantom Troop just because of their power levels and their, their numbers. And yeah, also to Bellity's point and Krolo's point, they're willing to push farther. They'll sacrifice more and that's dangerous. Okay. Shalmark really the, the soul of this operation. <laughs> This he might not be so calm about. Damn, who's really in control here? I feel like for this Kuripika centric arc, there has to be something like that. There has to be something like him overcoming this e emotional weakness or whatever you'd call it. His capacity to be blinded by rage. I think it's no accident that the enemy is clearly defeating Kuripika along the 
axis of their emotional control to give the most generalized form of this. Anything that feels threatening, anything that evokes hatred, rage, anger, jealousy, whatever it is, it's a sign of not having yet been able to cope with that area of one's own life and identity to a satisfactory degree. It's only sensitive to the touch because it's already like infected and weak and sore. While the immediate instinct is to like destroy the thing poking, the wound is worth treating. You know, the wound is worth thinking about and addressing, though it can be extremely challenging. And I'm not saying that all things should be coped with necessarily. Maybe it's something you, you don't ever want to accept, but the fact remains it's still something that you haven't come to terms with yet and are not at peace with yet. And that's worth thinking about. I like how that's second. But I guess that's smart, putting them as low priority. Sadly, yes. I like how there's no dissent at all or controversy about trying to save Krolo. Looks like they have a weakness to exploit as well. Here's a little bit of it of dissent. But I mean, even this is united in that it's all for the group, in a sense. They just differ on what that means. How does Gon feel? Ask Gon. He's one of the group now. <laughs> well, maybe they lose limbs to each other finally. Krolo's not around. He used to have their beef. Did he just vacuum his consciousness? But they're thinking about, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good job, I don't know, it's a big gamble. I don't know what else Kurpika can do right now, but it's a big gamble. They could just easily not listen and let Krolo die. Bad luck. Whoa. And as always, Ahsoka <laughs> sort of on top here. Ahsoka is just totally unseen in this situation, despite being perhaps the most deadly of all, just as he likes it. He just sat there and, you know, said some stuff, sent some messages, made a few phone calls, visited a uh, carousel. <laughs> That's all he did. And uh, he's winning somehow. Truly remarkable. He's an inspiration to us all. Just sat around for a while thinking about how aroused he was and he's getting everything he wanted. Though I feel like the fortune has told us what will happen here. I haven't figured it out to any degree of clarity, but Krolo survives. This interference, this meddling could backfire and actually help Krolo. It's just more confusion. And I think the stronger, better prepared people will benefit the most if everyone's confused. To those who have more, more shall be given, etc. Gon, Kilua, Thunder Cyclopedia. Yeah, this is a great episode for her. Finally got some insight into her, you know, personality. Yeah, the bullet things are, are odd. And clue on a toilet for no reason that I can decipher. Why would that be the memory? <laughs> Why would that be the thing that Pakunoda looks for? I think some people mistakenly think that's what Hisoka is or wants. It's like not at all an, an interest in going and Klua in that way. As if I didn't already like the Phantom Troop more than I should, this episode comes along, makes them even more interesting. I don't know, I asked the question sort of in jest or as a passing thought. What separates the Phantom Troop from the four protagonists exactly? <laughs> like, is it really clear we're, we should be rooting for one over the other? I mean, in one way, the answer is yes. They've done a lot worse. They've done terrible things. Our crew kind of has a clean slate, but in terms of core group philosophy, I'm not really convinced it's all that different yet. I think the four are still sort of in a neutral state where they could go multiple ways and they're still figuring that out on their journey. Point is, very hard not to root for the Phantom Troop. I kind of love them. I don't want this arc to end and I also don't like want to see them die despite how terrible a lot of them are.